Hello, I'm Victoria Reynoldson, communication and culture coach, and welcome to today's Wednesday Words, where I'll be talking about the cultural iceberg. The national culture we grew up in has a deep impact on how we see the world, we interact with the world, and we experience it. We may not realize it, and in fact, this is something which often is a challenge for us because we may not realize the impact it's having, particularly when we assume that we are doing business in a globalized, connected world where everybody operates in the same way, or do they? I would argue that the way we see the world is really quite different depending on our cultural influences. If you imagine, it's kind of like wearing a pair of glasses or spectacles and you're not realizing that you're wearing these, but the lenses of your glasses are actually impacting the way that you hear people, the way that you experience what they're doing with their body language, with their gestures, what they're saying and how they're saying it. And likewise, the other person or people are wearing their own pairs of glasses without realizing it. And of course, if we don't realize we're wearing those glasses, this might lead us to some problems because we interpret what's going on through our glasses. And this can lead to uh, judging what's going on and perhaps misinterpreting what the real intention is. So it can lead to problems in international project teams, for example, where there is miscommunication or misunderstanding about what is required or wanted or what something meant. And it can lead to clearly problems externally with customers, which is a really big problem if you're doing business globally. I don't know if you've experienced it, um, but I know that I have sometimes had clients say to me, oh, this happened, this behavior happened, or I heard this, and this surprised me, or it was really unexpected, or even I felt this was rude in this context. And I put rude in inverted commas, because again, that is an interpretation. But I think sometimes we need to be able to take a step back and actually say, was that really the intention for that person in that professional business context to be rude? Probably not. Probably there is some other factors at play. And this is where culture comes in, that we have to realize that there are cultural factors which are influencing how we're interacting with each other in business. So today I wanted to share with you the idea of the cultural iceberg, because I feel this is a really helpful metaphor, which I use with my clients to help them understand how this actually works in reality. So what I want you to imagine is a very large iceberg sitting in the water. The reality is that only 20% of the iceberg sits on the surface. So let's imagine a small peak here. And that 20% is what is visible and audible and ob observable. So I mentioned earlier, language, what's being said, how we're saying it, the body language, the behaviors. And that really only makes up the 20% the vast majority of the iceberg sits below the surface. So let's imagine the triangle continuing. And that is the 80%. And that really is the 80% that you don't know about. So if you imagine what's visible, audible, and you experience, below that sit, for example, beliefs, attitudes, um, the, yeah, the beliefs, the attitudes, the drivers behind that, the kind of core aspects of how people um, really, you know, fundamentally think about life. 
and these are not visible to you and people don't go around explaining them because sometimes they're not even aware that's what's driving their behavior, their language and communication. So that's why sometimes it's really good to take the step back to explore it in more detail. So for example, in my cultural training, I explore a number of different factors which are important and influence how we do business globally. And today I'm going to share with you just a few examples of these uh, particular factors, um, just so you can get a sense of how they work. So the first one I'm going to share is, what does it mean to be professional? Now, this is a huge topic and includes many, many different subtopics underneath it. But you, I, can, I can sort of see that you're probably starting to imagine this already. For some cultures, being professional means being very formal. Maybe it's about hierarchy and how you're interacting with senior management. And that has an impact on how you go get your decisions made. How do you interact in a meeting or address your emails? Um, professional, what does it mean to be professional? Also impacts how do we think about our personal life in the business context? So for example, how much does a person share about their personal life in, in a work context? For some cultures, not much is shared at all. And there's a real separation between the two. For other cultures, it's very open and you share exactly what's going on with your personal marriage, kids, and so on. And also it can be about small talk. How important is small talk and how open are you within that or is it just a conversation ritual so hopefully you can see this topic alone what does it mean to be professional has varying interpretations depending on your culture the next factor i wanted to talk about was body language now body language is an interesting one particularly in a virtual context if you're working primarily virtually with global customers or international project teams and the volume of body language really changes from culture to culture so what do i mean by this i mean that uh, for some cultures body language is very expressive it's very loud it's about taking up lots of space um, the hands and arms go up and also sometimes this is accompanied with, uh, with the voice. So the voice is louder and more expressive. It has also to do with hand gestures, facial expressions, and how much emotion you're showing. I'm sure that you can imagine that there are some cultures where actually it's the opposite, where actually it's not professional to show much body language. It's much more uh, restrained and still. Uh, perhaps you don't show much emotion through your face. And in fact, um, it's really about what you do with your words rather than with your body language. Okay, so now moving on to the third factor. The third factor I want to talk about was relationship to time. And this is a big topic. So um, again, we may assume in a globalized world, we all understand how time works that we want to be on time and meet our deadlines and deliver our projects to time. However, there are varying relationships to time depending on culture. And perhaps if you stop to think about this now, you can perhaps think of some examples. But there are certainly some cultures where time is incredibly important. So uh, what matters is you're on time for meetings, if not early, you deliver the project on time and you deliver to your commitment that the project or the work that you're doing is very planned and sticks to the process that risks are mitigated as part of that. For other cultures, actually, the time is a more flexible concept. And the idea is that actually, if there are varying uh, projects happening at the same time, maybe that's important because maybe that means the best one will be delivered, not necessarily all of them. Perhaps time is flexible for some cultures also because actually new opportunities might come in. And so you might want to then prioritize something else 
rather than finish the original project you're working on. And for some cultures, time is flexible because actually something important might happen that you need to change the priority of what you're working on or who you're meeting that day. So there you go. A little explanation, a short explanation of the cultural iceberg and, and how it works. I really do hope that's helped you to think about um, what you're not perhaps realizing at the moment. So what you're seeing, observing, experiencing and interpreting through your own cultural glasses and what you might need to take the step back on and perhaps uh, explore what possible interpretations there might be. I also help hope that sharing some of the cultural factors today has have been helpful for you to explore this idea about what does it mean to be professional, varying aspects of body language and how people have different attitudes to time. These are core principles and examples of areas that I explore in my cultural training with my individual and corporate team clients. I work with people who are either relocating to a new location, often to the UK or to an English speaking country, or because they want to work much more effectively as an international team and find out how culture, the cultural aspects and dynamics are perhaps not aware to them and not visible to them right now. It always starts with self-awareness, but self-awareness by itself is not enough. You also need to have um, thoughts about how you're going to create the strategies and the action plans to change what's going on and perhaps to bridge where there are some, some gaps and cultural gaps and find better ways of working better together. I do hope you found today's Wednesday words uh, helpful. And if you have questions on this, then I would love to hear from you. Please feel free to contact me. And of course, if you or your team are experiencing at the moment some frustrations or some uh, you notice that perhaps you're not working as effectively as you could either internally or externally with customers, then please do get in touch with me because I would love to know how I can support you with cultural training. Thank you so much for joining me today for Wednesday Words and I look forward to seeing you next time. I'm Victoria Reynoldson, communication and culture coach.